There's a new mock draft darling for the New Orleans Saints in town when it comes to the first round, and it's Talise Fuaga, offensive lineman out of Oregon State. Would he actually be a fit for the New Orleans Saints? We got all that and a little bit of land yap for you on today's episode of Locked on Saints. You are Locked on Saints, your daily New Orleans Saints podcast, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. What is good, Houdet Nation and Houdet family? I am your host, Ross Jackson, New Orleans native, your New Orleans Saints expert and credentialed member of the media covering those New Orleans Saints as a senior writer and reporter over at Saints News Network. And on today's episode of Locked on Saints, you're tired of my mock drafts, aren't you? So let's take a look at ESPN Matt Miller's seven-round mock draft and what the haul looked like for the New Orleans Saints, including a pretty good day three haul, all except for one player that I would be massively concerned about in the New Orleans Saints system. We're looking at another speedy wide receiver for the New Orleans Saints in day two. Is that really the right route to go? And then to kick us all off, the new draft darling for the New Orleans Saints. It's going to be all about offensive linemen out of Oregon State, Talise Fuaga, who was the first round selection for Matt Miller. Does that player actually fit for New Orleans? We're going to break all that down here and more as we continue on with today's episode of Locked on Saints. We appreciate you very much as always for making us your first listen of the day and for being an everyday or here on Locked on Saints, proud part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. And today's episode of Locked on Saints is brought to you by our friends at FanDuel, where you can make every moment more. Right now, new customers are going to get $200 in bonus bets by winning any $5 bet to get started. That's $200 if your first $5 bet wins, visit fanduel.com slash locked on to get started. All right. So like I mentioned, Matt Miller's seven round mock draft leads off with Talise Fuaga, the offensive lineman out of Oregon State. And the fact of the matter is that, yeah, that would be a great selection for the New Orleans Saints. He's going to be the new draft darling. Now that the Ryan Ramchek news has kind of hit the airwaves here, and just as a reminder, in case you aren't familiar with the Ryan Ramchick news, talked about it in a couple of episodes ago. So if you want to go and check that out and kind of get a more in-depth look at it, broke it all down for you. But the biggest thing here is that the Saints aren't necessarily really sure about the progress of Ryan Ramchick anymore coming off of that, uh, well, dealing with that degenerative knee issue that he's had and that he's going to have throughout his career. Uh, he was expected to maybe have major surgery this offseason, did not have major surgery, had minor surgery instead a month ago. Seemed like everything was kind of trending in the right direction. But at the NFL meetings, Dennis Allen saying that the progress isn't really necessarily there that he would have wanted. Progress doesn't sound like it was necessarily there the way that um, the way that Ryan Ranchick himself would have wanted as well. So just something to keep an eye out on. It's not a finished you know situation here. There's a lot of time until the season begins. But I don't think that the Saints should necessarily wait around either. I think that going after an offensive lineman in the first round already made sense for New Orleans in the first place, but now maybe makes even a little bit more sense here with this Ryan Ramchick news. So let's discuss a little bit more about Talise Fuaga. Offensive lineman, as we mentioned, out of Oregon State, six foot five, 324 pounds, checks the RAS score box as well with a 9.54 RAS. Remember, RAS is when we're talking about um, relative athletic score. So that's taking a look at that player's uh, athletics testing as compared to the athletics testing done at that position over the history of the combine, basically. So you're looking at 40 times and, and pro days as well. You're looking at 40 times. You're looking at, um, you know, vertical leaps, broad jumps, uh, short shuttles, like all these other things, 10 yard splits, 20 yard splits, all that stuff to just kind of get a composite score around how that player in their performance compares to players historically and typically at their position, uh, looking at all that. So that's the way that you kind of have to break all of that down. But um, that's what you're looking for. And so he absolutely checks the boxes from the athletic perspective. Uh, he's got, you know, glowing grades all over the place when it comes to run blocking, when it comes to pass blocking, when it comes to zone blocking and gap blocking as well. So both of those just being different ways that you approach the run game. Uh, but has played the majority of his time at right tackle, 699 snaps last year, 810 snaps the year before that back in 2022. Now, the good news is that despite that, what is that, 700, 800, 1,500 snaps or so, just over 1,500 snaps, um, he didn't give up a single sack 
in each of the last two seasons when he played the majority of his time and gave up only 18 hurries and five hits during that time as well. So he has been a solid protector for Oregon State. And if you think back to when we started doing mock drafts, he was pretty consistently a guy that I put in the mock drafts for the New Orleans Saints because we weren't sure about Ryan Ramchick. Then things kind of started to look better on the offensive line. They added Ali Udo. And so it was kind of like, okay, well, maybe edge rusher is the place that they go. Leatu Latu then became the apple of everyone's eye along with you know Dallas Turner and Jared Verse. And then things started to change from that after the Saints added Chase Young to where they went, you know, you could probably invest a little bit more in the edge, you know, at, at edge rusher, but you can do it later on in the draft. And instead, you can grab yourself the best player on the board, which looked like it might be Penn State offensive tackle Olu Fashanu. Now, all of a sudden, you're seeing the connections being drawn back to Talise Fuaga, who, make no mistake about it, is an absolute mauler. I mean, the guy plays with this big time temper. He's got a high motor. He's got all the things that the New Orleans Saints love when it comes to offensive linemen, except or not except, but in addition to that, from like the intangible perspective, he's just a lot more polished. He doesn't have to come in and learn the fundamentals, which has been a big issue for uh, Trevor Penning over on the left side is that he came in as this really, really good run blocker. However, when it came to the pass blocking game, he needed to learn a lot. And look, you're going to have to learn a lot as any rookie transitioning to offensive line in the NFL. The game is very different. And just to be honest, college, with the exception of some programs, Notre Dame, Wisconsin, Penn State, and a few others, a lot of those Big Ten schools uh, or Big Ten adjacent schools, however it is that you want to look at Notre Dame, Big Ten adjacent, ACC adjacent, however it is that you want to look at it. Um, But The thing about it is that college does a bad job at preparing offensive linemen for the next level because the game is so vastly different. The field is different, like all these other things. Hash marks on the field are different things. You're just a little bit more spread open, all that kind of stuff. So it's it's challenging. You're going to have to learn something new once you step into the NFL, but that's kind of true for every position. feels like Talise Fuaga... um, uh, you can look at also uh, Olu Fashanu. You can look at Troy Fatano. All of these guys, any of the three Fs, Fuaga, Fashanu, Fatano, any of those three uh, are going to be great selections for the New Orleans Saints at 14 if they decide to stick and pick there. So, yeah, I think you're going to see a lot more Talise Fuaga now going back to Talise Fuaga as the apple of everyone's eye when it comes to New Orleans Saints in these mock drafts. But look, he's got the production, right? No sacks allowed and over 1,500 snaps played in the last two seasons. Um, He's a solid run blocker, very solid pass blocker, really has an understanding of the zone run scheme as well, which is going to be big for this new New Orleans Saints uh, offense. And of course, the measurables all match up as well. So he's got the tangibles, he's got the intangibles, he's got all of it. So I do think that all of those pieces do come together for a guy that could make sense for the New Orleans Saints. And we'll see if he ends up being the selection at 14. But I promise you're going to see that name a lot more on a lot more mock drafts up until the NFL draft gets started or there's new news around um, Ryan Ramchick. Another big need for the New Orleans Saints right now is a big body pass catching wide receiver. Matt Miller addressed that uh, position, but I don't think that he addressed it with the right type of receiver. Let's break it down. We continue on with today's episode of Locked on Saints, part of Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's episode of Locked on Saints is brought to you by friends at Game Time. Game Time is the best place to buy your tickets, whether you're planning months in advance or moments in advance. You want to be able to be spontaneous. What about a nice eventful date night at a fun comedy show? Or maybe they really like theater and you can take them out to a show. Well, boom, there you go. Game Time gets you set up with flash deals all the way up to the time of the event and even sometimes an hour after the event begins, which is great for folks that maybe decide they want to go to a basketball game that looks like it's heating up or something good like that or a baseball game like whatever you're gonna be able to find it all over on game time absolutely no sweat and you're even gonna be able to see the view from your seats before you buy the tickets which is probably one of my favorite features when it comes to game time as well so go check them out today so you can take all the guesswork out of buying tickets with game time download the game time app create an account and use the promo code locked on for twenty dollars off of your first purchase terms apply again create an account and use that promo code l-o-c-k-e-d-o-n for twenty dollars off download game time Today, last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. All right. 
Wright family. The New Orleans Saints still have a big need at wide receiver, if you ask me. Now, I do like the addition of Cedric Wilson with the new kickoff change, new kickoff rule change. I love the addition of Stanley Morgan as well. But so far, those are the only two additions for the New Orleans Saints at wide receiver. I'd love to see them bring back Lynn Bowden. I'd love to see them continue to add to that position. And I think that they very much will. And the draft is a really good place to get it done. But they have to be specific about the type of receiver that they need and what it is that they're looking for, which is, everybody throw up your X's. It's an X receiver. That's the guy that the New Orleans Saints really need over on the outside. And Matt Miller addressed wide receiver in this year's draft, but I don't think that he did it with the right type of receiver. It's what we got coming up for you as we continue on with today's episode. We appreciate you very much for making us your first listen of the day every day. Don't forget, speaking of ESPN, if you're tired of watching the stuff that's on ESPN, on Fox Sports, all the shouting and yelling and arguing and all that stuff, and you want some good granular breakdowns from the people that know the teams best, don't forget to go and check out the Locked On Sports Today, National Sports 24-7 stream, the first of its kind on YouTube. YouTube. You can also find it on the free Amazon TV channels app as well. So go check it out today. Locked on sports today. Figure out what's going on around the world of sports from the people that are actually there (laughs) that actually have something invested in it. All right. So as we take a look here with this mock draft and look, I think that the majority of these selections make a lot of sense for uh, the Saints. The Talis Fuaga selection makes sense. You're going to hear some very familiar names when we get to the day three hall. I think Matt did a great job with the day three hall for the New Orleans Saints. But here's where my first big question mark comes in. And it's just understanding what it is that the New Orleans Saints need. The Saints need have a need at wide receiver, but they don't just generally need a wide receiver. They need somebody that's going to be able to give them the style of receiver that they don't have on their team right now. And for me, the guy you're looking to replace effectively is Michael Thomas, right? You don't need him to be, you don't need Michael Thomas in particular to come in from 2019 and be, you know, a record-breaking offensive player of the year or anything like that. You just need that style of receiver. Big body, can box out, get some tough catches for you, help you move the chains, all those other things. And I don't know if that's what necessarily was given to the Saints in this mock draft. On round two, pick 20, pick 45, uh, Matt Miller from ESPN for the Saints went with wide receiver Roman Wilson out of Michigan. Now, I like Roman Wilson's game a lot. And if the New Orleans Saints add an X-style receiver somewhere else in this draft or in free agency that can be a more consistent you know, presence there as a big bodied guy, then the addition of Roman Wilson would make a ton of sense. The wide receiver out of Michigan, five foot 10, just 184 pounds. He would need to bulk up a little bit getting into the league. But as we've seen, the Saints have not been afraid to reach for a receiver that, or not reach, but to select a receiver that is in that weight frame. Chris Olave, not far from there. Uh, Rashid Shahid, who was an undrafted free agent, wasn't far from there, all of that. But comes in with an 8.54 RAS score, so that relative athletic score we talked about with Talise Fuaga as well. Here's where my concern is with the Roman Wilson. I love his game. I love the tenacity that he plays with. The mentality that he plays with is awesome. It's awesome. Like you just see him really kind of go and fight and like that football is his anytime that it's in the air. I love that attitude. He's going to be a guy in the league, especially at that slot, at that size, that's going to move into the slot. So If you feel really comfortable about A.T. Perry now being your ex receiver and being the go up and get it guy, if he can make those strides, then maybe he's the answer to the ex receiver question. And that gives you the Roman Wilson piece there. But my concern was the verbiage that was used in in the mock draft where Matt wrote that Roman Wilson gives you somebody that will be able to replace Michael Thomas. And I severely disagree. Um, it's and, and I get the idea. It's because he operates from the slot and Michael Thomas operated from the slot quite a bit as well. But the size of these two guys and the roles that they played, the way that they were utilized will be very, very different at the next level. You're not going to use Roman Wilson as an inside out guy. And that's what it was that made Michael Thomas so special is that he was a guy or that makes Michael Thomas so special is that he is a guy that can play in the slot and go out wide and can be your split in weak side guy all by himself. And you can still move the chains with him, even though everybody knows the ball is going to him. Now, one thing that I will say in Roman Wilson's favor, because I have no issue with Roman Wilson game. I think he's a very good player. You just have to find the right fit for him. And I don't think trying to make him be Michael Thomas is going to set him up for success. But if you can let him be Willie Sneed, it makes a ton of sense. If you can let him be Lance Moore, it makes a ton of sense. One of the things that we talked about last year was that the Saints did not have 
a Lance Moore, right? They don't have that guy that they can just line up in the slot, deploy from the slot every single snap and make something work with, right? You've got guys that you can move in and out and that's great. Chris Olave can do that. Rashid he can do that. A.T. Perry can do that. And you like having A.T. Perry as the big bodied outside guy that can also be the big slot guy. That's a little bit more of the replacing Michael Thomas to me than a guy that would spend a hundred percent of his time more than likely. I mean, not actually a hundred percent, but 70, 80% of his time in the slot. Now, what I was going to say positively about Roman Wilson here, because again, I have no issue with Roman Wilson's game. It's just how you utilize him and setting up for the right thing. One drop last year, one drop last year. And he's not a guy that drops a lot of passes at all. Like that's not his game. His game is very much that if you get the ball his way, he's going to go up and get it, or he's going to come down with it. Now, I don't mean to make him sound like a, you know, contested catch, you know, uh, you know, master or anything like that. 37.5% contested catch rate last year. Uh, you know, again, five foot 10, uh, uh, 184 pounds. It's going to be tough for him to go out there and battle out for those one-on-one catches or for those, those 50, 50 balls, but outstanding versus man coverage, 2.68 2.68 yards per route run um, is running a lot from the slot. His drop percentage in 2023, 2%. 2%. So I think that's where he helped you out. 784, or sorry, my apologies, 789 receiving yards last year on uh, 48 catches, was only targeted 67 times, but still had 12 touchdown receptions. So these are the things that I think that Roman Wilson does extremely well. So let's take the Michael Thomas part of the equation out. Let's talk about A.T. Perry as the guy that steps in and actually gives you the Michael Thomas-ness that you're missing, that you've lost. Then if you've got a guy like Roman Wilson who can sub in and who can you know slot in to the slot, bounce outside every now and then, I think that he in his 439 speed, his ability to be able to operate from the slot, his solid hands, all those other things, pairs extremely well with having a big bodied guy on one side and Chris Olave or Rashid Shaheed over on the other side. Four wide receiver sets, him, Rashid, Chris, and uh, AT all out there together. You can move Cedric Wilson in who can play in the slot and who can play out wide, all those things. That's where I think Roman Wilson becomes a really, really, really fun selection and a really, really good selection. And again, more speed on this offense. Somebody that can catch a pass and get you some yards after catch. Those are the things that you want to see from a guy like Roman Wilson. I don't think you got to worry about him being a guy that's going to come in and replace your six foot three, 218 pound behemoth of a player that just dwarfed everybody out on the field, even if they were bigger than he was. I don't think you have to worry about Roman Wilson being that guy. But if you draft him in the second round and put him in the right situation to where he's operating from the slot, where he has the big guys over on the outside, they're able to take some of that attention away. And you want him to just carve up some of those defenses and make some secure catches for you. Bam. That's where Roman Wilson makes a ton of sense and could be a home run for the New Orleans Saints in day two. Day three, can be loaded with home runs as well. We've talked about how good this draft class is late, uh, particularly in terms of what it is that the New Orleans Saints need and where their positions of need are, considering the depth of some of those positions in this year's draft. And Matt Miller gets a haul, except for one player, one player that I would have some major concerns about in the New Orleans Saints defense. Let's get to that as we continue on and wrap up today's episode of Locked on Saints, part of Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's episode of Locked on Saints brought to you by our friends at FanDuel. You can make every moment more with FanDuel, especially here during March Madness, because I know you've already said goodbye to your busted brackets. They're all busted, let's be real. Uh, but FanDuel is going to let you bet on every single game in the tournament. That way you don't have to worry about bracket busting. So whether you're betting on a big upset or on the number one seed, which we've got a couple of those examples coming up here very soon, it's time to go dancing on America's number one sportsbook. Right now, new customers are going to get $200 in bonus bets if your first $5 bet wins. That's 200 bucks in uh, point spreads that you can use, or sorry, that you can use on point spreads on money lines and even pick who's going to win it all. Hey, you want to go for the favorite or you want to go for the big upset? Number five, San Diego State later on today, taking on number one, Kentucky in the men's tournament. Kentucky, 11 and a half point favorites. Not a bad place to put that $5 bet down and get immediate 40 to one odds with the $200 in bonus bets. If you want to get started, just visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and you can bet on college hoops until they cut down the nets. 
Let's get it, Houdat Nation. Wrapping up today's episode with a look at a day three haul by Matt Miller for the New Orleans Saints. Taking a look at all of it, except for one player that I would have some concerns about. And I'm going to get to that player very quickly here and very soon. Just want to remind you, we are your team every day. So don't forget, we'll be right back here with you for another episode tomorrow on Friday. Keep you up to date with all the big stuff going on around your New Orleans Saints, including our In Case You Missed It segment coming back. It's where we're going to make sure you're all caught up on everything from a very, very busy week in New Orleans Saints land. So let's take a look at this day three haul by Matt Miller. I want to start off with uh, round five. Pick 150, where he took Isaiah Adams, the offensive lineman out of uh, Illinois. Very good zone blocking team there in Illinois. Very much a big thing you got to be able to do. Better run blocker than he is a pass blocker. That might sound familiar. Uh, but the big thing for him is the versatility. Uh, in 2022, he played 119 snaps at left tackle, 842 at left guard. Uh, last year in 2023, uh, he played 101 snaps at left guard, but 730 at right tackle. So he has experience on both tackles sides. He's got experience at left guard where the New Orleans Saints might have a hole or at least will have a competition. He's also spent a little bit of time. He took nine snaps in 2023 at left tackle as well, but doesn't matter. Um, so I think it's the versatility with him that makes a lot of sense. Uh, Pro Football Focus has him listed at six foot five, three hundred and fifteen pounds, twenty four years of age. So already like a little bit older, but that's never a thing that I really mind, especially when it comes to offensive linemen and quarterbacks. I like for them to be a little bit older. I like the maturity and their ability to be able to kind of understand scheme, system, high IQ, all those other things. All right. So I want to get to the player now that I have my concerns about, and it's Johnny Dixon, cornerback out of Penn State. Um, my thing about Johnny Dixon all comes down to missed tackles. He has a 20, he had a 25.8% missed tackle percentage in 2023, and that's just not going to fly in New Orleans. Now he can be a guy that, you know, has an impact on the ball. He's got four, he had four forced incompletions last year. I uh, played all over the place, uh, mostly as an outside corner, but took some snaps in the slot, took some snaps down in the box as well, has had three interceptions over the course of the past three years, 77.9 passer rating when targeted last year. But to me, like all that, just a bunch of numbers. The, the big number that matters to me is that 25.8% missed tackle percentage. When you're being drafted in the fifth round, you want to make a team, you got to be able to play on special teams, right? That, that, that becomes a big thing. Can't trust him there because missed over a quarter of his tackles last season. Um, when you are trying to you know, establish yourself as a depth player in this defense, in this Dennis Allen, New Orleans Saints defense, you got to be able to tackle. Look at look at the DBs. Look at that. Marshawn Lattimore, Paul Sonadivo. Alante Taylor, Isaac Adam last year. Like these are all guys that can tackle and that want to tackle, that like to tackle, that love to tackle in Alante Taylor's case. So you got to be able to do that. And if you can't do that, you're not going to make it in this defense. And with a fifth round selection, one of four, maybe you can roll the dice and see if maybe you can teach the tackling a little bit better once you get into the, the league. But we all know tackling for the New Orleans Saints has been a consistent issue still on the defensive side as well every now and then. So, so I, can I call it consistent? It's a consistent thing that we talk about at least once a season. Let's say it that way. Um, I don't think you can invite somebody in that's got yeah, got poor tackling issues and things like that. So I, I would pump the brakes a little bit on Johnny Dixon there as a selection for the New Orleans Saints. But I like the rest of what Matt Miller uh, does for the Saints in uh, the rest of this day three haul. So let's get on to that. So let's look at um, round five, pick 170. We got a quarterback, ladies and gentlemen. We have a quarterback selection. It is Devin. Devin Leary, the quarterback out of Kentucky, six foot one, hallelujah, finally, not only a quarterback, but one that is taller than six foot, 215 pounds, and a career touchdown to interception count of 87 touchdowns to 28 interceptions. Quick math, that's 30, uh, 3.1 to 1 uh, when that when you break that all down. So uh, really, really solid stats there. Uh, he's going to be a guy that you're going to hear a lot about when it comes to Football IQ and all those other things, really good anticipating. But the thing that Devin Leary does extremely well, and this is something you had to be able to do in that Liam Cohen offense in Kentucky, is you got to be able to read pre-snap. You have to be a good pre-snap diagnosis quarterback. And a guy like Devin Leary, that's where he checks the box. But what are the things that he doesn't check? Doesn't have NFL size doesn't have the NFL caliber arm in terms of being able to push the ball downfield. And because of that, you see a lot of passes sail, things like that. For me, like if you can't check the box in NFL size, if you can't check the box at NFL arm, you're going to be in trouble getting into the next uh, level. 
But hey, if you're a guy that's being drafted in the fifth round, the expectation isn't that you're eventually going to become a starter, not in today's NFL anymore. And so you're looking at somebody that could potentially come in, compete with Nate Peterman, compete with uh, Jake Hayner to be one of the backups um, and to maybe be a practice squad quarterback. Great. Awesome. And especially now, because the NFL just made a rule change that if you want, you can now designate your third quarterback, your emergency third quarterback from off of your practice squad. So they don't have to be on your active roster any longer. You can bring them up off your practice squad as the emergency third quarterback. So that's where a guy like Devin Leary could make a ton of sense. All right, let's get to a few very familiar names that you've heard from me. Um, at pick 175 in the fifth round, Tyrone Tracy, the running back out of Purdue. At pick 190 in the sixth round, Jaheim Bell, the tight end out of Florida State. And at pick 199 in the sixth round, Jalen Her uh, Harrell, the defensive end out of Michigan. To me, one of the most underrated edge rushers in this year's class. Um, I love that run. I love all three of those players. And you see, you've, you've heard me uh, mock those guys a ton. Uh, to the Saints. And so it's cool to see it on on another uh, mock draft here. Uh, Tyrone Tracy in particular, somebody I would be really excited about. Five foot 11, 209 pounds, 9.77 on the RAS. So very, very athletic guy. Um, has played wide receiver at Iowa, transitioned to running back in Purdue. And if the Saints want to find themselves a deep, I don't want to say a Debo Samuel like player because you're not going to find the next Debo Samuel, but you can find somebody if you're looking for somebody that can slot into a Debo Samuel role, right? Debo like role. Malachi Corley, the wide receiver out of Western Kentucky University, is definitely one of those guys. Xavier Leggett out of South Carolina could potentially be one of those guys. And then Tyrone Tracy is another one because with Tyrone Tracy, you can actually turn around and hand the ball to him. And that cannot be overlooked when you line up somebody in the backfield that you want to run a run a route with. If they can also take the ball on a handoff and run the football, that's what sells the defense. That's what creates conflict for the defense. That's what I really like about a guy like Tyrone Tracy. And then same thing for Jaheim Bell. You can just utilize him all over the place. Six foot two, 241 pounds. He's got some of the athleticism as well. 8.44 on the RAS there. Uh, but just one of these guys that is a guy that you can move around a ton, kind of taste some hilly ish in that way, right? You're not going to have him throw any passes, of course, but you can use them in line. You can use them in the slot. You can line them up out wide. You can deploy them from the backfield. You can just do a lot of good stuff with them. Uh, Jalen Harrell, one of those guys that's just kind of late in this year's draft, kind of being overshadowed by Brendan, uh, what is it, Braden? Braden McGregor, I think his name is, the the other uh, edge rusher on the opposite side. But Harrell, to me, is the more like core one that I would like to see the Saints potentially roll the dice on late. I know they signed Chase Young, but hey, go and get yourself another edge rusher as well a little bit later on uh, in, in the draft. And then finally, pick 239 in the seventh round, J.D. Bertrand, the uh, linebacker out of Notre Dame. Um, Bertrand to me is, is a guy that like the size is maybe the biggest concern for me. Six foot one, 233 pounds, just a little bit short, but honestly, like in today's NFL, that's not that bad. If we're really thinking about it, uh, he's a guy that could potentially come in and be like your backup, you know, inside linebacker, your backup Mike and all the other stuff, just really good football IQ, um, uh, he doesn't have a lot of length. So getting blocked is, is going to be, you know, a big thing for him. He's got to be able to find ways to shed and all those other things. But man, he is so good at just diagnosing the, diagnosing the ornamentation of an offense does not get tripped up by play action often does not get tripped up by motion offense. All of the, uh, what's the word that we usually use? Eye candy, all the eye candy stuff doesn't really impact him. And I think like from, like the mental processing side, that's one of the places where J.D. Bertrand is is a really good option, especially in the seventh round. And look, you can use him as a special teamer and all that stuff too, but gives you some depth later on in the draft as well. All right, there you go. That's Matt Miller's uh, seven round mock draft for the New Orleans Saints and my thoughts on it. Overall, great mock draft. Overall, great mock draft. I just think the Roman Wilson thing needs to be reframed in terms of how you utilize him in this offense. And then I think the other piece was just Johnny Dixon, right? Careful with the, the missed tackle stuff. But outside of that, like 
Really, really solid stuff. Got the you know young quarterback. See what happens there. You got the linebacker that can play with his head on fire. You got the edge rusher that's underrated. You got the you know versatile guys in the offensive line and around the offense. So I really like uh, what Matt did here. So wonderful stuff for that. And we'll be back with you with another episode here tomorrow. Don't forget to also go and check out Locked On Pelicans and Locked On LSU for what's going on around the rest of Locked On Louisiana. We appreciate you very much for making Locked On Saints a part of your day, part of your routine for saying yes to me and the show. As always, if you see me. Please say hi. If you need anything else around your New Orleans Saints in between these episodes, make sure you follow me on your favorite social media at Ross Jackson, N-O-L-A. Hit me up. Let me know how the family's doing. Let me know how you're living. Let me know how you're mom and them. And trust you, that nation, I'll holla at you.